video we're going to talk about why you may be experiencing more skin issues since being in menopause as well as what you can do through your diet and lifestyle to calm and soothe irritated and itchy skin. So if you're new here my name is Shirley and I'm a nutritional therapist with a three-year diploma in nutritional therapy. And on this channel, I share videos to help you manage your menopause symptoms through your diet and lifestyle. As someone who's experienced psoriasis and eczema since I was about 15, I think, I can really understand how self-conscious skin conditions can be. And also, like the rest of us, I do get concerned about wrinkles and saggy skin developing. So let's talk about skin. Skin supports our immune system, it protects us from the outside environment, it keeps the moisture in our body. Believe it or not, in this age where we experience hot flushes, it does regulate our body temperature. It protects us against photoaging or skin damage from the sun, it creates vitamin D from sunshine and is an organ of sensation. As estrogen levels drop when we hit perimenopause and beyond, we also lose the protective functions of estrogen on our skin. As we begin to get itchy, irritated skin, and we start scratching, and we do break our skin, the protective elements of our skin becomes compromised. Estrogen supports the production of collagen and hyaluronic acid. And it's those two elements that keeps our skin plump and moisturized. It's no wonder then that as we enter perimenopause and intermenopause and postmenopause, our skin loses its firmness and becomes saggy. We get pigment changes. And when our skin gets damaged, it's slower to heal. Postmenopausally, women actually lose around 1% of skin thickness per year. And that may be due to the fact that we lose about 2% of our collagen every year in the postmenopause period. We actually lose up to 30% of our type 1 and type 3 collagen in the first five years following menopause. However, we do have to remember that other factors affect the speed of which our skin ages. So things like genetics, smoking, poor food choices, ethnicity, and sun exposure. So how can we protect our skin? One of the most important things to cut back on in our diet is to cut back on sugary foods, simple carbohydrates, and alcohol. I know this from experience because I really begin to start scratching in my ears and in my scalp and even on the dry patch on my shin. And I know how irritating it can be and how hard it can be not to scratch. When we eat too many sugary foods, it changes the balance of the bacteria on our skin and it's not just our gut that gets affected it can come out as your itchy skin or rashes or other skin conditions when we start scratching we release histamine and that can make our skin itch even more so then we're starting that negative cycle of itch scratch and itch and once we start doing that and our skin gets broken it increases the risk of microbes or bacteria getting into our skin and that may cause even more itching and scratching. Another reason to reduce sugar in our diet is because it produces something called advanced glycation end product. And what that basically means is that the sugar attaches to the collagen or the proteins in our skin causing our skin to age faster. I know for a lot of you it can be a shock to all of a sudden experience acne at menopause. The reason to reduce sugar in your diet is because sugar can convert testosterone into the more potent form called dehydrotestosterone. 
and you'll experience this as maybe losing hair on your head but growing hair on your chin and this testosterone conversion may also be one reason why it's easier to get easily irritated and angry another thing to cut back on are processed foods processed food provide minimal nutrition but they have lots of added sugar added salt added preservatives and lots of chemicals that i can't even pronounce let alone know what they're for all these chemicals may be causing inflammation on your skin's layers leading to increased irritation and itching all these processed foods may be causing digestive issues that manifest itself as your skin conditions now if you're experiencing hot flushes and sweating you may be becoming conscious of body odor and you may be resorting to using lots of toiletries soaps body washes and other products to stop you being self-conscious about body odor Unfortunately, this may be working against you and creating more skin irritations. What you're doing is causing a change in your skin's microbiome or the balance of your skin's bacteria. And this change may be what's causing you to experience more itching and irritation. The other reason to reduce using lots of different skin products is because the chemicals act as xenoestrogens where phytoestrogens can support our body's lower estrogen levels by attaching to our estrogen receptors the chemicals bind with our estrogen receptors unfortunately because they are foreign chemicals in our body they do cause a negative reaction these chemicals are also known as endocrine disruptors which means they cause hormonal imbalances so not only are they creating negative estrogen like reactions in your body they're also stopping your natural estrogen from binding with your estrogen receptors so you may be getting estrogen dominance and the associated symptoms that goes with that when I found out about xenoestrogens and how they create hormonal imbalances and how they affect our estrogen levels, I cut right back down on the toiletries, the perfumes, the nail polish and other commercial products that I use. I've been creating my own facial oil blend for about three or four years now. From last September, I started creating my homemade body lotion and in the past few weeks I also bought a shampoo that has less chemicals, less phthalates, less parabens and more supportive of skin health. So those are the changes that I've made when it comes to supporting my hormone balance and my estrogen levels. If you're getting value from the information I've shared so far, I'd love you to hit the like button so that YouTube knows to share this video with other women who may benefit from the information I share here. And if these are the sorts of information you're looking for to support you through your menopause journey, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you'll get notified when I've uploaded another video. The third tip I have when it comes to supporting your skin health is to drink lots of water because it's needed in lots of body processes and of course keeping your skin hydrated. Drinking water helps to flush out the toxins in your system and drinking water is even more important if you do experience hot flushes and sweating. And when I say drink more water I don't mean drinking a full glass and feeling really bloated. What I do is I will have a glass of water on the side and I sip that and refill my glass as I need to. If you're not used to drinking water, there are other ways that you can increase your water intake. Eating water-rich foods is one way of adding more hydration or more water in your diet. Soups and broths can also add to your water intake per day. 
Tea and coffee can add to your water intake per day. However, I would limit the tea and coffee because caffeine can stay in your system for about 8 to 10 hours. And although I do have one or two coffees per day, I would drink those well before 12 o'clock because otherwise it will affect my sleep. But some women do get affected by caffeine because it causes hot flushes and sweating. So that may be one reason to avoid tea and coffee. The alternative is to have fruit teas or herbal teas. And I do have peppermint tea in the evening if I feel like something warm to drink. Or if I want a cup of tea in the afternoon, I will have something called red bush tea and that's naturally decaffeinated. The fourth tip I have when it comes to supporting your menopause skin is to add more proteins in your diet. And that's because proteins provide the amino acids to help support the production of collagen, build muscles and for skin healing. From around the age of 35 years old, we lose muscle mass and this loss increases as our estrogen levels decrease. And when we lose muscle mass, we also lose the framework that our skin sits on. And this may be one reason that we get more wrinkles and sagging. The European Society for Clinical and Economic Aspects of Osteoporosis, Osteoarthritis and Musculoskeletal Diseases suggest that we should be having 1 to 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein and especially around 20 to 25 grams of protein at our main meals and this is to support the decline in muscle mass as we age. The fifth tip I have when it comes to supporting your menopause skin is to add more healthy fats in your diet. Having more healthy fats in your diet supports the production of ceramides. Ceramides are the fatty acids in our skin that protect our skin from dryness and infection. And this is what keeps our skin supple and intact and supports the absorption of nutrients as well as the removal of toxins. We need our skin to be intact because broken skin allows other bacteria and other microorganisms to enter our skin's barrier which may then lead to more itching and irritation. When I did the research for this video I found that borage oil is actually really good for supporting our skin barrier and preventing water loss that can result in your dry irritated skin. Another way to protect your skin barrier and keep it intact is to add lots of vitamin B5 rich foods. And that's because vitamin B5 acts as a moisturiser and supports the healing of keratin, which is the skin's most outer layer. Tip number six is to add more antioxidant rich foods in your diet. And these are foods that provide you with vitamins A, E, C and D. Vitamin A supports the skin's immune function, cell growth and division and reduce inflammation. Our skin contains the highest concentration of vitamin C in the body. Vitamin C may also protect against sun damage and oxidative stress as well as reducing inflammation that may cause skin aging, wrinkles and slow wound healing. Vitamin E protects us from sun damage, oxidative stress and works as a general antioxidant scavenging free radicals as well as reducing inflammation. Zinc is another really important for our skin health and immune function especially when it comes to collagen production and skin healing. So tip number seven when it comes to supporting your menopause skin is adding more phytoestrogen rich foods in your diet. Phytoestrogen foods are known to have estrogen like effects in the body and they do this by binding with your oestrogen receptors and creating that oestrogen-like activity. Phytoestrogens are thought to support the skin by increasing production of collagen, 
supporting the production of hyaluronic acid as well as proteins in the skin, protecting the skin against oxidative stress to slow skin aging. Now you may be wondering why I didn't mention a lot about vitamin D when it comes to protecting our skin and that's because I've already created a video on vitamin D which you can watch right here.